Welcome to another spirit-filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video. As well, I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. You declare over this church that it's not only spiritually vibrant men and women who arise, but people who are great people of means and people of capacity. Genesis 17 and verse 6, I will make thee exceeding fruitful. It says, give it to us please. And I will make nations of thee and kings shall come out of thee. Not kings shall come to you. Does that sound like what comes out of a woman? So what you are holding called a baby is a king, royalty, greatness. You're my glory, the lifter up of my head. You're my glory. So prayer model number one, let's do a quick recap. Praying in the spirit, praying in tongues. Number two, declaring scriptures in prayer. Can I give you number three? Number three is called the prayer of inquiry. Hmm. This is a very powerful model. Please follow carefully. The prayer of inquiry. That means you can, in the place of prayer, the purpose of that prayer is not to declare. The purpose of that prayer is to come back with answers. The prayer of inquiry. First Samuel chapter 30, please. And verse 8. First Samuel chapter 30. Is God helping someone's prayer life? Let's read it together, please, if you can see. Are you ready? One, two, read, please. And David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. This is the kind of prayer to pray before you take major sensitive destiny defining decisions the prayer of inquiry do you know why this prayer is important because the bible says there is a way that seemeth right unto a man believers listen to me there is a way that seemeth right unto a preacher there is a way that seemeth right unto a young graduate there is a way that seemeth right unto a nigerian but the Bible says the end. You can see it looking very attractive. I hope you know Satan does not use evil alone to destroy. When he uses evil and you can detect it, he will use good. For instance, a visa on your passport. A visa on your passport does not necessarily mean God wants you to relocate. Now, there's nothing wrong with relocating. Are we together? But I'm saying that there are many times Satan will use good things to destroy you. Sometimes an employment letter can be the worst thing that would have happened to you. Hmm. What God intends to give you is not good against evil, it's life. Because both good and evil came from the same tree. So there are times that Satan will use a lot of good. If he sees that you are fighting bad friends, he will bring good friends who can destroy you. The most important thing is that you are destroyed. Are we together? When Satan came to Jesus, how many of you know that what he used for his temptation, the raw material for tempting Jesus was, it is written. He did not tell him, go and take a bottle of some alcohol that the Roman soldiers take. No, he came and said, it is written. He shall put his angels charge. I mean, if you hear someone quoting scripture that much, you want that person to be your friend. And yet the name of the person quoting it is Satan. So just because something carries the carriage of good, I pray that God is helping someone this morning. There are many good things that are destructive to your destiny. I tell you sincerely many good things you must sustain the power to reject both good and bad things the programming that makes you frown on all at only bad things you would have given yourself cheaply to satan weapons are fashioned and fashioning is a product of study 
what is this person what does this person want at this point oh you are so lonely you need a good friend and satan will bring somebody who is sincere but not wise that person becomes a reason for your destruction everything you tell that person he or she will go and tell everybody because he brought somebody who has not worked with the weak the weakness of managing relationships the person is not evil the person is just not wise oh we are still trusting god for a child we say really okay let's pray and then the next thing you see another person sending you a text in the night that which you are looking for that i've heard about may god give you and you're saying where did this come from now <laughs> good things can destroy you many good things have destroyed destiny many many do you believe what you're hearing should i pursue should i overtake you see sometimes when all the variables are there chances are excellent that you may develop pride and not need god again the certificate is there my uncle is now a senator which is an advantage oh my my sister in america told me you just submit this there's an assurance that in one month your passport will be stamped at that point it doesn't make sense to ask god should i pursue because you suspect what if he says no in the presence of all these great opportunities do you know why many people don't ask god for answers they suspect that he will reject it and you are you are mostly right because the moment you start asking god that means you are saying i am willing to work with whatever you tell me the way we fight god is proof that we were not serious about asking him should i pursue you've already prepared the horse you've dressed the horse you've climbed on the chariot you are ready to go the horse has even started moving and say oh good god should i pursue so that it will be on record that i ask you and god will say come back and you say i knew it i reject that spirit it can't be god the bible says the path of the job so you were not really serious about inquiring let me tell you how to hear from god be willing to accept any answer as a sign that you trust his will for your life if not your hearing will always be wrong i can tell you 90 percent of our prayer of inquiry we already have our answers what we are largely doing is hoping god agrees with you that's the truth how do i know that the difficulty the way we fight god back after he speaks if you are fortunate and your answer his answer is consistent with what you've always wanted then you now say now i knew it i knew it god should i start that business i already have my 10 million i'm not asking you for money just give me permission and god says go ahead and you rejoice say, i this is the kind of god i want to serve but while you are praying and god says that 10 million is not for you bring it to the king's court you say what did i say no god cannot do this kind of bad thing knowing how nigeria is now this is not god this is a familiar spirit and i curse that spirit god if it's you verify and your first dream becomes somebody that god uses maybe it's even me i will say obey god as he has said you get up and say i hate all these people no i don't <laughs> the prayer of inquiry is a very risky prayer adventure you must love god and trust him to delve into this one because it would disrupt many of your plans but one assurance i leave with you is the kind of glory that will come out of your life when god directs you when he led them when he led them moses said do not let us depart from here let me tell you this sometimes using our frame of mind and our frame of thinking our plans can be so beautiful based on how we've seen it but how many of you know that his thoughts are higher than your thoughts help me that his way is higher than your ways god's god's thoughts will always be infinitely better and greater than what you ever imagined but you see one thing with god is that he does not strive with the spirit of man for long There are people today who have lost in business because God told them. They pretended they did not hear him. 
when the holy spirit comes to you comes to you and you keep resisting him he will honor you and leave you but for that consequence you can be sure you'll go through it hmm. please ask god questions you don't need to ask god silly questions like um should i wear a black shoe or a white shoe he says the answer is in your brain that one god has given you don't have to make a mockery of god like that but let me tell you i am convinced that in a man's life you will not make more than 10 or 20 destiny defining decisions destiny defining decisions are not many it is at such times when seasons are about to change when certain decisions involve god oh, for instance where do i relocate for the next 20 years with my children that's not something to make over coffee destinies will suffer from it am i wasting your time yes who do i marry how many children do i have lord there are five men coming and honestly based on me oh, this second one this the kind of potential i'm seeing there is very convincing is that true you've not read of people who turn from grass from uh, what was grace to grass and others who went from grass to grace you would have looked at david if you saw david in the wilderness and you took david to your home maybe they would drive david away but that was a king you were driving away honestly let me tell you to be carnally minded truly is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace it is only god who knows the future of men's destinies and there are times you need to lock up yourself you have an opportunity for a great job an oil company and then god is calling you into ministry don't assume you can assume you are called into ministry and reject the oil company and find out you were not called into the fivefold ministry you think i'll say it the other way around there are times where you are not called the oil company was what you would have taken and you reject it just assuming that because you will suffer as if god did not call you and at a point you say what is wrong and god will say i call you generally but not to this assignment every wrong decision wasting your destiny some of you made careless destiny decisions and prayed may the god of mercy i'm praying again may the god of mercy help you may the god of mercy come through for you in the name of jesus christ when i began to sense in my heart that god would have me leave zaria to abuja i loved zaria so much i mean ministry was going exceptionally well god was doing something within that region that I had not seen since I came there. It was, it, was a, it was a season of phenomenal ministerial strides. How does God come in the midst of nothing? And now says, I struggled with God for three years. And there are prayers where you say, God, confirm. You have asked for trouble. God will confirm it anyway. You will use dreams, a scripture, visions, enemies, friends. Everything will confirm it. God for you it's interesting to know how i finally camped in abuja it was during covid i just returned from london where the last sets of people to leave and i thank god for that i would have been trapped in that place for three months i returned back to abuja preparing to go for a miracle service in zaria when they just announced the lockdown and said nobody is going anywhere i stayed in abuja and that was it you see that now but i used that opportunity alone i started praying and god said finally now that i have your attention this is the new season finally we're stepping into okay i started praying by the map of abuja the map of nigeria the map of africa the map of the globe keep praying on it that is your assignment i look at myself now and wonder what if i resisted and say you don't know what you are doing you don't you are not in zaria oh god i'm the one who knows what is happening he will leave you but you will see that you will keep seeing things in the spirit that you are rising and it will never manifest for some of you after this conference go for a retreat bring your major plans for this year and for the next 10 years don't assume take this as a prophetic instruction don't assume you are about to take 
decisions that affect your establishment don't hurry decisions no it's worth it to if you get a decision right it can redeem 20 years you miss out on a decision is like the hand of the clock it will come back but time will be lost and destiny is measured as a unit of time who is god speaking to please go for a retreat so after this conference thank god for the women go for a retreat lord i'm not going to make this major financial decision major marital decision major ministerial decision i cry unto you the god of all grace speak to me what is the next season of my life church is quiet i'm assuming that the word is entering your spirit praise the name of the lord that's why you can see ordinary people who don't look like it but their decisions are always destiny defining you know why they have mastered the art of engaging this prayer god should i pursue should i overtake should i pursue you will see a building that does not make sense and the spirit of god tells you let's go to the place of prayer fast for two days by the second day god will tell you this building you see a company is coming to buy it in two months buy it now you will sell it for 10 times the price buy it now other people they leave all these carcass but because you had him you can just go with childlike faith and even make a deposit just to trap it down Two weeks later, people are calling you and saying, X, Y, Z, you say, I can't believe it. Is it a scam? They say, no, they need this building. Whatever price, name your price, add profit, add commit, add everything. We still want it. And someone will look at you and say, how, how is your life working like this? The power of hearing from God. This is the model that many of our fathers in the faith taught us. They will tell you, God said this look at where rccg is for instance you know every time i have the opportunity to pass that place i imagine if god told me to go to that place i will most likely disobey honestly i'm being sincere with you under god i will most likely i'll ask him for forgiveness later on but most likely i would have disobeyed when you see the end point of prophecy it looks glorious but you rewind in your mind and see that bush that's when you see the power of hearing god but I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed unto him against that day. Behind the giant strides that trail believers is obedience to something they are sure God said. Can I tell you this? If you take a step knowing and or believing it was God that led you and God sees the sincerity of your heart even if you are in error he would defend you for his namesake this is one thing I know about God that means if I walk through this LED believing that it was a door and believing that it was God that told me to walk there God will carry a door and put there for my sake to make sure that it is not that I trust in him is a risk Look at what he told Peter. If it be thou, bid me come. Peter verified. This is an example of such prayer. Peter said, tell me if you are the one. And he said, come. Peter took the step of faith. But because he was sinking, God took responsibility. It was at my word and he held him. Don't be afraid of obeying God. There is a system to defend his name in your life. Sometimes when you become too calculative and scientific. Okay, God, you've told me this, but let's consider. We'll review this again in 2027. It won't work that way. There are times you have to trust God and walk on water. This is a word for someone. You have to trust God and walk on water. Being unnecessarily scientific will not get you forward. He said, register the company. Don't ask questions. Go and register the company where will i get the contract leave that to god you take a step of faith he says go for a three-day retreat don't say god what for is disobedience you just go there first after the first day you are prayed you are hungry you don't even know what you are doing in that room you just stay there the answer is coming hmm. let me give you the last one You agreed with me this morning to challenge your prayer life. Oh, I hope we're still together. Yes, Let's review. Number one, praying in the spirit. Number two, yes, 
Number three, the prayer of inquiry. Can I give you number four? The second, the fourth model of prayer is warfare. 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 This one, I will not even be tempted to delve in. I will just touch it in a hurry. Else we'll spend the whole day here. Warfare. Prayer. Warfare prayer. Philippians chapter 1 and verse 19. The assignment of warfare prayer is to establish the realities that have been finished in Christ. To make them manifest in your life. I like how the Bible puts it. To turn anything to your salvation is the assignment of warfare prayer. Warfare prayer is not about fighting demons. It's not about fighting spirits. It's establishing the victory that is already wrought in Christ. Are we together? Over spirits, over situations, over circumstances. I like the way the Bible puts it. To turn things for your salvation. It says, for I know that this shall turn to my salvation. How? Through your prayers and the supply of the spirit of Jesus Christ. I know that this disappointment, I know that this attack, my God, there are things every believer must know. I know that this family crisis, I know that this court case, the assignment of warfare is to turn anything to your advantage. Anything. Anything to your advantage. There are times when you come close to a tree, when you don't pluck the fruits on time, they start rotting and they fall to the ground. But the earth has a unique way of turning everything to the advantage of the soil. Are we together? It now becomes manure. Something that you see bringing flies and smelling around and the earth is not threatened by it. It's a mentality you must have. As a believer, you must look at everything from the standpoint of God's sovereign plan. There is still a way God can get glory from this. You were sent away from your work. Okay, the deed has been done. What else can be done from this? I know that even in the midst of this, it can still turn for my salvation. This was Paul's mentality. When he got into prison, he would not sit down and say, God, why me? He would use the opportunity in the prison because he knew something. He would write letters to the churches and say, I hear that you are misbehaving. I'm soon coming out of this prison. I will come and visit you. But in the meantime, correct this, correct that. He was a man who knew that to live is Christ and even to die is gain. You must know this. Warfare prayer is predicated on an understanding that all things work together for good. Please hear me. To them that love God, not to everybody. All things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are the called according to his purposes. Believe that all things are working for your good. Truly believe it. The disappointment, the joblessness, including what you think is happening nationally. Lord, I don't know how you do this, but because I am the called, it must work for my good. In the name of Jesus Christ, work for my good. And you engage in the place of prayer. Are we together? Yeah. Scriptural prayer model. You may want to correct that. I see someone projecting my message scriptural prayer models ends with an s scriptural prayer models please thank you scriptural prayer models warfare now there are people who do not believe in warfare prayer it depends on what you call warfare i personally do not believe in an endless struggle of fighting demons and fighting spirits with no victory in view that becomes an insult to what christ has done on the cross are we together yes however let me assure you that nothing gets established on its own satan and all unclean spirits are stubborn spirits meaning that they have a passion to insist on your pain until you disengage them by light I desire to come to you, even I, Paul, once and again. He said, but Satan hindered us. 
knowing that victory has been wrought in christ does not threaten satan is engaging and appropriating that victory that threatens him satan is not afraid of scripture he's afraid of the believer who understands how to engage scripture for your profiting hallelujah he will kill anything he's allowed to kill steal anything he's allowed to steal and you believe me on this destroy anything he's allowed to destroy this is the assignment of warfare prayer haven't done all to stand stand don't assume that god loves your children so much they will be nice wonderful and disciplined people engage in the spirit when you see the cloud when you see the formation of darkness that is the time to take on your priestly regalia and get to the place of prayer the bible says if you turn aside in the day of adversity there is a day in everybody's life called the day of adversity you don't have to be good or bad he informs you pre-informs you so that number one you build prayer strength prayer power for those days and that when those days come you can engage there are times that it looks like all hell have chosen to break loose over you your marriage your children your health are we together now you must know how to engage warfare prayers warfare prayers are serious times of spiritual adventure usually they do not go with you praying alone there are times you need to draw forth the support of other brethren people who love you and understand because you need to engage with power warfare prayer this is very important jesus is about to go to the cross and he goes to gethsemane and the bible tells us that he locked up himself and he was praying until the the um the sweat became like blood dripping from him the question is what kind of prayer is that that the word incarnate the very son of god there have been times in my life where i had to engage that kind of prayer let me give you two information about warfare prayer every time seasons are about to change this is the kind of prayer you need to engage in because satan will always start at stand at the corridor of new seasons birthday periods anniversary periods do you know it was during i told you yesterday it was during a man's birthday that a prophet's head went away i have taught my people and trained them that before you celebrate your birthday if your birthday is on the 12th by 9th or 10th or 11 you should have some time of retreat now not many it's not a, it's not a scriptural injunction it's just a prophetic guide i don't believe in people sleeping and snoring themselves into defining seasons no that is a careless christian in my opinion honestly honestly when jesus was born there were reactions in the heavens when jesus was about to be commissioned there were reactions when jesus was about to start the core of his assignment his passion there were reactions when he died there were reactions when he resurrected there were reactions on the day of pentecost there were reactions there are certain kairos moments in our lives where you cannot afford to slumber while men slept there are defining seasons in your life you're about to celebrate your birthday take at least one or two days let the people celebrate you lock yourself and pray especially where you are striking very very notable you know points in life these are survival strategies everybody who wants to live serving the purposes of the kingdom and to walk in victory must understand warfare prayer i will never allow satan come and roam around my vicinity unattended to i have the responsibility of sanitizing my spiritual atmosphere and i must do that without fail he will not respect the fact that you are a man of god that is not his business i think i may have said it here let me say this and then one point and we'll wrap up there are spirits listen please there are spirits that are assigned to believers the moment you get born again there are demonic spirits assigned to sabotage the purposes of god in your life number two there are spirits that are assigned to ministerial offices they are not assigned to individuals they are assigned to whatever of if god has called you to be an intercessor there are spirits that will look for you you don't have to call them they will come 
they were sent to pursue every intercessor because the devil knows the power of prophetic intercession there are spirits that are assigned to regions so you relocated to lagos welcome but there are spirits it's not only bureau of statistics that are where you came there are spirits who are where you have arrived do you know why they begin to mold you to look like the deformities within that territory if that territory is known for poverty if you like be a multi-millionaire if you don't have spiritual intelligence you can step into that territory and mysteriously things will start going bad it's true it's true one court case after another one trouble after another or they will tell you that three of your relatives need a kidney transplant sixteen thousand per one can you bring out 50 million and all these troubles just plague you in a moment you dry to look like the spirit of the region i wish i were lying to you i would have just told you i'm sorry but it's true that also includes overseas so overseas does not have a special closeness to the throne room no it's just that the people are a lot more enlightened than we are now and their policies work a lot better than it does here but as far as the attack of spirits the whole earth lies in wickedness you will find spirits everywhere now imagine the spirits that attack you as a believer then a man of god spirits that attack families because there is a prophet there is an apostle that is coming there and you don't even know where the attack is coming from you would have looked at all of these people in the bible and seen the kind of attack that came over them what is that what am i looking for now i'm sure mary would look at her child and say why do they want to kill my baby as for me i've made a covenant with god that for as long as i'm alive i will keep satan far from my life the ministry god has given me and everybody god has brought under my care i take it as a responsibility one thing i can tell you satan is not he's not a friend he's not an advisor there is no discussion you should have with satan he is evil the epitome of evil he will kill anything he's allowed to kill i've been sick before i know what it means to have mysterious infirmities warfare prayers let me give you the final one has god spoken to someone how many have we considered number one praying in the spirit number two declaring scriptures in prayer number three the prayer of inquiry number four warfare prayers number five and this will be the final one there are many models but i'll stop here the prayer of thanksgiving hmm. i will tell you how this prayer works very powerful the prayer of thanksgiving Colossians 4 and verse 2. Malakosiata. Let's read together. Ready? One, two, go, please. Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. One more time. Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. He says, continue in prayer and while you watch, engage. Add to that prayer model thanksgiving let me tell you how this prayer works you convert your request to thanks as an act of faith father i thank you because i am the head and not the tail are you getting that now i thank you because in the name of jesus i am blessed i thank you because i declare that it is well with me so it's it's like you are adding declarations but this time around thanksgiving is what ushers what you are saying lord i give you thanks there are times that your entire prayer scope can just be god i thank you the thanksgiving can come in a song the thanksgiving can come in a dance the thanksgiving can come usually this kind of prayer is backed up with giving please listen you want to engage this prayer model it does not just end by saying thank you usually in the midst of your praying god will place it in your heart to support that prayer with a seed with understanding it's true 
continue in prayer and watching the same with thanksgiving philippians chapter 4 and verse 6 be anxious for nothing the bible says but in everything by prayer and supplication you see there again with thanksgiving connect thanksgiving to the prayer he said let your request be made known unto god father i thank you because the bible declares many are the afflictions of the righteous but the lord delivered them from the, him from them all i thank you because i'm delivered i'm escaped like the bird escapes from the snare of the faller i thank you because my day is blessed i thank you because it is well with me it is well with my children thanksgiving is what proceeds from that prayer and sometimes when you don't have anything to say you sing your thanks you dance your thanks it is still prayer a powerful prayer model in fact hello beloved in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And then if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.